Hello, everybody. My name is Barbara Drasga, a.k.a. The Deal Diva. And tonight we are going to be talking about how to profit from product bundles in 2018. And product bundles are not just to sell on Amazon, but you can sell them on your own website. You can um, license them to other companies. You can, uh, you can sell them on eBay and also, of course, on Amazon. And I know I have a lot of Amazon sellers on here. So we're going to talk mostly about Amazon in this webinar. But keep in mind that you can sell bundles on any platform. So just keep that in the back of your mind as you start planning your year for 2018 and how you're going to grow your business. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump in. I created a presentation for you guys with a lot of content in it. Be sure you take notes. I'm going to give you some uh, homework and assignments in there that you can implement after the webinar. I'm also going to make an offer further on in the webinar, and I'm going to give you something for free as well. Um, so we'll have an incentive at the end as well. So go ahead and stay on the whole time and um, do your homework after the webinar, and let's just go ahead and get started. I will check. I'm going to check the chat one more time before we get started. Pardon my glasses. And um, okay, so uh, some people are having trouble hearing, but um, figure it's on your end because everybody else can hear. So go ahead and just figure it out on your end and we'll keep going and then you can rewatch the, the recording when, um, when the replay is put up. Okay, so everybody uh, can go to um, my Facebook group and join it, facebook.com slash groups slash deal diva, D-E-A-L-D-I-V-A. And go ahead and join the discussion there. Ask any questions you need to ask about anything about selling online, any platform, any type of product, private label, wholesale sourcing, it doesn't matter. And um, then you can also go to bundlemasterclass.com and you can check out a bunch of information and uh, free videos and a free lesson on bundling. And you can also register for the Bundle Masterclass there too when you're ready. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and get started here and uh, give you a ton of content. So let me go to share screen. And boom. Okay, so as I said, I am Barbara Drazga. How to Profit from Bundling in 2018 is our topic tonight. So let's just go ahead and dig in. So tonight you're going to discover what types of bundles sell well January through June. Now, uh, I like building my, um, my product base based on evergreen bundles. An evergreen bundle is something that's going to sell year-round for the most part. But today we're going to talk about how to leverage the holidays that are coming up in like January through June, um, most of the, the obvious ones, and uh, focus a little bit more on seasonal bundles so that you can always have that, that pop of income during seasons, uh, but again, uh, based on having evergreen bundles underneath that. That's the way that I build my business. So how to find fanatical niche markets. Um, how to do competitive research, see who is selling what on Amazon that competes to that same market that you do and how to do it better. And then where to find products by sourcing wholesale and also direct from manufacturers. Now, um, there is a fallacy that you need a ton of money to buy directly from wholesale or manufacturers and that's simply not the case. And I'm going to show you uh, a couple of sources on this webinar where you'll be able to source very small amounts just so you can try out different bundle concepts. So you're also going to learn what mistakes to avoid when bundling. I'm going to show you a listing that totally fails on the bundling spectrum and, the, and why it fails. And also give you a couple of pointers on what to avoid when you're bundling, things that you can do better than everybody else. And then, of course, we're going to talk about we're in December of 2017 right now. It's just, tomorrow, I think it's December 1st. And um, I'm doing a lot of thinking right now about what I'm going to what I want to envision for my business and implement during the entire year of 2018. I've already started doing my goal setting a couple of weeks ago. So we're going to talk about how to plan your bundles now so that you can increase your bottom line all the way through 2018. Okay. So who am I? Barbara Drazga, D-R-A-Z-G-A. Yes, uh, it's not a typo. <laughs> that is my last name. And I've been selling online in some form or another since 1996. I started speaking at conferences, uh, internet marketing conferences back in 2003. I'm the producer of the Bunny Slipper Business Boot Camp and the um, Women's Web Workshop. That was the first and at the time only women's web uh, an internet marketing workshop for women by women with only women on the stage. And uh, one token male in the back, Andrew, from the local massage school <laughs> giving massages for, uh, for tips. Um, so that was back in 2003 and 2004. Uh, since 2015, I've been an active Amazon seller. I am still an active, am a very much an active Amazon seller. I uh, source wholesale 
and build my own private label bundles and I've been to China in April and I'm going again this April and I'm building uh, now uh, multiple brands with products across each brand. Uh, I believe in the term of being a practitioner versus a guru. I think there are a lot of people who are maybe perceived as gurus in every industry, but who aren't actually doing uh, what they are teaching anymore. So there are a lot of people teaching selling on Amazon who don't actually sell on Amazon. I believe for myself, it's important that I'm a practitioner so that when I learn something new, I can teach it to you. I teach as I learn. So I am an active Amazon seller and for all intents and purposes, will remain one until something happens, but uh, that's, my, that's my plan. And then I have multiple streams of income. I believe in having passive income streams. I invest in real estate. I do hard money lending. I have physical products, uh, not just on Amazon, but off Amazon as well, my own websites. Um, I have a publishing company in um, a global B2B industry, and I do training and consulting. So that's a little bit about me. Let's move on, make it about you. Let's talk about owning your Amazon listing. Why is it important that we own the listing on Amazon? And by owning the listing, I mean nobody else, nobody can compete against us. So how do we do that? First, there's a lot of seller saturation. There's going to be more and more sellers coming online. I don't remember the exact number, but I saw a statistic that was an astronomical number of new sellers coming on to the Amazon platform every single month. And I also saw another statistic that only about 10% actually make it past a year. Uh, but still, we have this regular influx of new sellers coming on, um, and there's a lot of price tanking going on uh, if you're doing retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, or wholesale, jumping on other wholesale listings, all existing listings with other sellers. Uh, and there's, there's also some funky stuff going on in the Amazon platform. There's always going to be a small number of people on any platform that are, you know, trying to skirt the rules or just play and break the rules in order to hurt other sellers. So I like to steer clear of all of that. And that's why I switched over to creating my own products, whether they be private label or bundling, basically owning privately, a private label is a or bundling is kind of a poor man's private label. I hate saying it that way because uh, you don't have to be poor to bundle. And um, so brand restrictions. So when the brand restrictions started hitting last summer, that shook things up a lot. So there are a lot the fewer brands that you can just buy wholesale and sell it on Amazon, a lot of those brands are now restricted. And it's easy entry private label. Doing bundles is easy entry to private label without having to buy a container full of stuff uh, and you know larger quantities full of items. You can test a private label concept by bundling and then you know go larger from there if your test turns out to be successful. And then Amazon, uh, my prediction is, and uh, I've, I've read this in a few different places, so I guess it shouldn't be my prediction, but I've, I've, I've seen the trend and I've read that there's a trend that Amazon will start favoring brand owners more and more, people bringing new products onto their platform. Because think about it, it benefits their customers to have more of a variety of products from which to choose, not necessarily a variety of sellers on the same product. Does that make sense? Okay, and then I have control of my listing details. When I own the listing, either by having a private label product or a bundle that um, is my listing and it's, I've locked it down so it's competition proof, nobody can come in there and change the details of my listing. So I'm gonna pause for a second and go back to the chat and make sure that um, everybody is, uh, we're all on the same page. Anybody has any questions? Okay, true dance is so, so true, good stuff. All right, so you guys, uh, are you all mesmerized by me or are you, you off drinking beer and doing your dishes and not listening? If you're mesmerized, put yes in the chat so I know we're all still here. Um, LOL, great. Okay, good. We're still here. You don't have to be mesmerized by me. <laughs> I could lull you to sleep with my voice, I know. Okay, so let's go back and share screen and continue with the presentation. All right, good stuff. Thanks for that validation. Do you guys know how weird it is when you like sit here and talk to your computer and there's no interaction? It feels kind of like, Twilight Zone-ish. So, so just make sure you're giving me some love in the chat and giving me some feedback so I know that you can continue to hear me. Okay, so Heather, I'm going to go ahead and answer all questions at the end of the webinar. So go ahead and put your questions in the chat, but I'm not going to break the flow up of the webinar. Um, I want to get through all of this content because I, I spent a few hours this afternoon um, finishing this up. So I want to make sure I get it all to you. And then at the end, I'll do Q&A. So I have a different approach to bundling. 
There are several people. There are a lot of people out there. Anita Breeze, she is in the house. Anita Breeze was one of the first to write an ebook on seasonal bundling. And she, I actually did an interview with her that's uh, included in the Bundle Masterclass on how to do seasonal bundles. So there, you can go to YouTube and type in how to create bundles for Amazon. I take a very different approach to what I've seen other people teaching um, about bundling. My approach is the customer-centric research approach, approach. So I believe in understanding your target market before you source one single thing. Really digging down and understanding what they need and want, what their pain points are, what are their passions, and what are the problems. And then finding product and putting together a bundle of products that feed their passion or solve their problems. So identifying competition. Uh, that's huge, not just bundling and throwing it up there without understanding the competitive um, landscape for that particular market. Build and evaluate bundle. Con so I, I build and evaluate on um, a smaller a bundle concept. I'll build out a small quantity of them to evaluate it and test the market. And if it takes off really quickly, then I might refine it, add more to it, put a custom box in it and really flesh it out on a larger level. Um, identify suppliers. So identify suppliers from a multitude of different sources, not just um, not just going to you know eBay or AliExpress, etc. Creating a custom piece. This is huge. So putting together a bundle where you have one or two or several pieces in there that make it yours, that nobody can um, duplicate that particular mix of products and custom piece. And then test and refine. Here's the, another thing that I think a lot of people forget, selling on Amazon in general, and also when you bring your own products to the marketplace, is marketing off of Amazon. Doing pay-per-click, doing uh, your Pinterest. Teresa Rose is awesome, by the way. If you haven't had her Pinterest course, go check out Teresa Rose. There's an interview with her in the Master Bundle Masterclass as well. And, um, and also Facebook training. Uh, that would be, uh, Rachel is, is amazing. Uh, she's also got, we've got an interview with her in there. We've got a lot of interviews with experts on their niche expertise in the Bundle Masterclass. But driving your own traffic to your listings. You could use Craigslist to drive traffic. Um, Reddit, BuzzFeed, there are so many different ways you can um, partner with uh, authority figures, for example, in, in a niche that's related to your bundle. There are a lot of ways to drive traffic, and I don't think a lot of people are talking about how to do that. And I think that's going to give you the competitive edge with any of your listings. Uh, automate and delegate. So after you get kind of um, feel out a bundle and get it going and you know that it works, you want to uh, quickly automate and delegate, making that bundle happen on a regular basis so you're not sitting in your, uh, in your living room polybagging things for the rest of your life, right? And then lather, rinse, and repeat. When you find something that works and you automate and delegate, uh, and you've got a system and a process down, then you just move on to the next concept and the next and the next and the next. And you build out your portfolio of products. Okay, so types of bundles. There are a lot of different types of bundles. And this is just, these are just a few of them. And I encourage you guys in the chat, if you, think, if you can think of other types of bundles, put them in the chat, all right? And let's make this more of a collaborative thing. Um, there's gift bundles, you know, people who like uh, scuba diving or I like to sing, so I'll buy, and, and I play guitar. So I'll buy, I'll buy a bundle of, you know, a guitar, a bunch of guitar picks with, with horse pictures on them and um, it, just anything related to uh, guitars. Um, I'll buy a bundle of stuff if that bundle gives me a whole lot of value. And anybody who knows me who wants to buy me a gift bundle, they'll know the things that I like and they'll look for bundles related to my passions. Solution bundles. So especially around January, people are looking for solutions like how to reorganize my kitchen. My pantry is a mess especially during Q4 when I, I don't even have time, I don't have time to cook. I have to like order out every single night and just make sure I have plenty of leftovers. So my pantry is a mess. So come January, I'm going to reorganize, take everything out. And you know, I need tools. I need things to now uh, organize that area in my house. So that would be a solution bundle for me. I would love to buy a bundle of things that would just make that space look beautiful without me having to pick out individual stuff. Project kits. So projects like um, how to build an XYZ, and you put all of the, maybe how to make a quilt, but you, you don't actually sell the quilt, you sell all of the pieces to making the quilt and an instruction. Maybe you have somebody on Fiverr or Upwork actually create a pattern for a beautiful quilt that you own that pattern, and then you source all of the pieces to make that pattern happen, and that's a project kit. 
And then of course, ready to give gifts. So gift bundles are always, or, or gift baskets are always a big one, right? So especially around any holiday, um, pretty much all of my clients, uh, I'll be uh, going to Amazon and uh, finding a gift basket for their offices that's related to maybe, um, I'll probably do, I'm in Arizona, so I'll probably, I haven't decided yet, but I'll probably do Arizona-based or Southwest-based gift baskets for all of them because most of them are on the East Coast and they don't get the cool stuff I can get out here like, you know, cactus jam and things like that. Uh, and then bulk products. So a lot of folks forget about um, maybe doing a bulk package of, let's say you've got a classroom that, um, and the teacher wants to buy 30 teddy bears and 30 heart cards and for her whole classroom of 30. So you could do a bundle where you have 10 teddy bears and like four different products that create uh, an experience for those 10 kids. And then they'll buy multiples of, you know, if they have 30 kids, then they can buy three of those um, bulk products. And then decoration kits. Let's say uh, decorating for, I like unicorns. I know it's goofy. I know it's silly. And I can't even tell you why I like them. I like owls too. Same thing. Really crazy markets. And um, if you, if somebody wanted to throw me a party, they would probably do a unicorn related party and um, you, you create a decoration kit. There's a lot of them on there. I'm not saying you should go after unicorn decoration party decoration kits because check the competition. There's a lot of them. But if you could find a niche market for people who like motorcycles or airplanes or even niche down further than that, right? And put together a decoration kit. I did a day of the dead decoration kit for um q it's still selling it's still selling it's not just for q4 it'll day of the dead is big year round uh that skull image so that's just an example of a decoration kit so these are just a few ideas for types of bundles there are a ton more if you have ideas for the types of bundles that you've run across go ahead and put it in the chat and i will make sure to save this chat and make this available uh, during the replays so you guys can also revisit the chat Okay, so topics for the first half of 2018. Again, uh, not written in stone, these are just a few ideas. New Year's resolutions related to fitness, health, productivity, organization, bad habit breaking, if you're trying to stop smoking, et cetera. Um, if you wanna be more productive, uh, you might, um, like this calendar behind me, I get the same calendar every single year from Blue Sky. I already ordered mine up for 2018 because I love it so much. I love their products so much, right? So. Um, you put that, that together, you put together maybe a magnetic calendar with a bunch of whiteboard markers and, uh, and a, a tip sheet on how to be more productive, et cetera. There's a potential bundle. So Valentine's Day, niche it down. Everybody's going to be doing Valentine's Day bundles, and there's a lot of money in it and a lot of opportunity. Uh, but you want to make sure the numbers work and niche it down like a Valentine's Day gift for owl lovers, for example, fill in the blank, for motorcyclists, right? Same thing with Easter, you can go bulk. So last year what I did was a, um, I had this giant pack of bunnies. I just had stuffed bunnies. And I, I sold those stuffed bunnies in bulk instead of making individual, um, individual bundles. I just sold them as a big bundle of, I think like 25, um, 25 rabbits, okay. Or niche it down, again, for Easter. You wanna do an Easter basket for, uh, for instance, one year my, my sister-in-law, bless her heart, she's so creative, she did, um, at Easter, she made a separate Easter basket for everybody in the family and uh, based on what their hab hobbies were. And mine was a gardening bundle, uh, not a bundle, a basket. So she picked out little individual items for um, my, that fed my love of gardening, like seeds and tools, a little tool belt. And I think even the basket was, uh, I think it was a carry basket to put my tools in my um, in while I went around uh, in the garden. It was so creative, it was amazing. So find niche markets like somebody who loves gardening, for example, and create an Easter basket for gardeners as one example. Okay, so Mother's Day, big one, huge, anything with hearts on it, right? And then Father's Day is also big. And I was talking to Anita earlier today, Anita Breeze, she's another a master bundler and she's also a member of the Bundle Masterclass. She's in the chat. And she was telling me that she does really well at Father's Day. And she said her theory is that it's because women buy more gifts than men, which I thought was kind of an interesting concept. Makes sense, right? All right, let's keep going. Here are some examples. And this is just, this, these weren't even on Amazon, okay? I went to Google to show you that you can start your bundle research anywhere, not on Amazon. You just go to Google and start looking for ideas or Pinterest or Etsy, right? 
So uh, organization bundle on the left hand side is a company called Tidy Living. And look at this. They put uh, a, I had organization on the brain today, right? I was really thinking about how I could reorganize my house in every single room. And look at this. Everything's matching brown. And they actually had like three different color options with hangers and a hamper. And for $45, you get all of this. That's brilliant. And then I really like this. Um, I got this off of Pinterest, the, uh, the peeps in the middle. That's actually an edible Easter basket. So there are four packs of peeps and then this ribbon braided um, bow and handle on the top and then some plastic eggs and some uh, little, little paper, you know, shredded paper in the middle. Now, if you just bundled all of those individual pieces together along with a, an instruction booklet of how to make this, that could be a bundle. So on the upper right, I've got Happy Valentine's Day. So that is an example of a kid's schoolroom. So you could sell a, um, a decoration pack for Valentine's Day for uh, a classroom, for example. And then down below, it, all those eggs is an example of maybe a bulk uh, listing, a, a selling all these really pretty eggs in bulk. What I found in, uh, I saw last year, there were these really neat themed eggs, like shaped, they were shaped like footballs and not just regular egg shaped. And I thought that was kind of neat. If you put together like a, a football Easter basket using football shaped eggs, for example. Okay, let's keep going. So Pinterest, I went on Pinterest and all I searched for was classroom Valentine's gifts. And this is just the top of the first page. There were so many fun ideas. So uh, if you just looked at any one of these, for instance, the ones with the glasses on it, so if you put a bundle together of 10 glasses, 10 random cards, 10 ribbons, 10 packs of stickers, and put that together, together as a classroom Valentine gifts that a teacher can hand, they can hand the individual pieces out to the kids so the kids can make their own uh, gifts, there's another idea. Okay, idea generation, okay. So um, let's try search. This is going to be part of your homework here. I want you, when you get off this call, to try searching on Google, Pinterest, Amazon, Etsy, and start searching for terms like New Year's resolutions and see what comes up. And you're going to get these blogs where it'll be like 100 New Year's resolutions to make. Each one of those New Year's resolutions you can create niche bundles for and really niche down each resolution. So it could be... Um, you know, one of the biggest resolutions for New Year is how to lose weight, right? I want to lose weight um, or get healthy for, let's just say lose weight for New Year's. Well, trying to compete on, on the keywords new, lose rate, weight or weight loss on Amazon is going to be pretty much impossible. But what if you niched it down? I do what I call mashups. So lose weight with some other high ranking keyword like um, losing weight for diabetics or gluten-free weight loss, right? And, or um, uh, weight loss for children, or weight loss kit for students, or for high school students, right? Really niche down. When you find these um, global keywords, niche it down even further. New Year's organization, we talked about our, that already. Uh, just pick a room in the house, any room in the house, from kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, pantry, it doesn't matter, a uh, spice cabinet, right? Organization for sp your spice cabinet, and create a bundle around that, and then create variations of different colors. And this is just off the top of my head. I, if you haven't been on one of my webinars, um, this, this might be a little bit unnerving for you, but if you have been, you'll know I kind of go off on tangents sometime, sometimes, and my brain starts brainstorming out loud. So bear with me, take notes. I speak fast, but you can always rewind and watch the replay. So search for unique Valentine's gift on Google. I did that and found some really funky stuff. Valentine's projects. All right, go to Pinterest and so type in Valentine projects. A uh, class Easter gift, fun Easter basket, um, mom's day for Nana, right? A mother's day gift for Nana, mother's day gift for, um, how about for the, the gay market, right? So a mother's day gift for dad. I'm not sure what the keywords would be, but that's a niche market, right? How about a mother's day gift for um, a poodle who just became a mom to baby poodles? There are people out there who will buy something like that, especially if that, like the poodle market or the toy poodle market, huge fanatical niche market. Okay, let me let me head over to the uh, the chat here and make sure make sure I haven't lost you guys. Are you guys still there? <laughs> I'm going to stop the share here and there you go. Okay, how are you guys doing? <laughs> I see a lot of comments in the chat. Um, 
Activity kit, gift bundles are huge. Yes, Anita, gift bundles are huge for Valentine's. Awesome ideas, pretty good. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going because uh, I've got a lot of content to cover and I tend to add even more content on the fly as, <laughs> as I'm doing these webinars. So we might go a little bit over, but if that's okay with you guys, go ahead and say yes in the chat and uh, I'm just gonna keep going. All right, good stuff, I'm gonna keep going. So, make over here, take a look of water. Make sure you guys are drinking enough water. Okay, niche market research. Again, I believe in starting with customer-centric research first before I look at any products, any consider putting any products together, because there's this maxim, don't fall in love with your product, right? So we can have this niche market love that we, we have something we personally absolutely adore, but not a whole lot of other people, people adore it. I mean, it could be that niche that there's not enough um, there's not enough market for us to bring a product to and be able to sell enough consistently over time to make it make sense for us. So don't fall in love with a product. Start with customer centric research. My entire, um, um, the, the entire first module of my course is like the absolute longest because it's about um, doing customer centric, really in depth customer centric research. So know your market before you source. Identify passions which some people are we know what passions are people are fanatical about it they love it uh, i bet you can all in the chat type in something that you or a family member is crazy passionate about and whatever comes to market that you think is cool that meets that passion you will buy it for me it would be star trek and star wars right? if there's something look what i bought for myself okay i bought this for myself for christmas check this out right it is a star trek bluetooth communicator all right how cool is that it's totally cool, right? So I can put it on my desk and then um, I can say uh, Star Trek, uh, beam me up Scotty or something and I'll, and I'll dial Scotty or beam, call mom. It's really cool. So you can tell me anything if it's related to Star Trek. Yes, I'm that much of a geek. Okay, so put in the chat something that you or a family member is completely passionate, crazy, unexplained, passionate about. And then also problems. Uh, when we solve somebody's problem, um, by bringing pieces into a bundle where they say, that's it, that all of those things in that bundle will help me feel better, will help me be more productive, will help me meet the needs of my special needs child, will help me lose weight, whatever problem they have. Um, you want to identify the pain points of that problem so that the pieces in your bundle once you understand somebody's problem really, really well or passion really well, then you can bring products into your bundle that are very relevant, okay? And that'll, uh, a little bit later on, I'm going to talk about the mistakes people make in bundling, and uh, I'll, we'll revisit this, okay? Um, because it relates to one of the mistakes people make. So conduct deep keyword research before you ever source one thing. So I use merchantwords.com. Scope by Seller Labs. It's a free scope is a free extension, uh, Chrome extension you can download. Google Trends, Google, uh, and also MerchantWords.com is normally like I think it's like thirty five or thirty nine dollars a month. But if you go to MerchantWords.com/diva, D-I-V-A, um, George, the creator of it, it gives you nine dollars a month, so you save a ton of money. Um, it's MerchantWords.com/diva, and you can get it for nine bucks a month. So look for niches where you can combine high volume keywords. I call them mashups. So it could be um, find two fanatical markets. So if, uh, okay, two fanatical markets we already talked about. I like Star Trek and I like gardening. Now, if or even Star Wars, right? So if you gave me gardening tools that had a lightsaber handle, and there was a bundle of those, and it came in a carry bag that looked like the Death Star. <laughs> I would totally buy it. <laughs> yeah, it's sad but true. <laughs> but I would totally buy it, right? So look for mashups because gardening and Star Wars, those are two very high volume keywords. And if you can put those together, and again, that's just one kind of out there example. But I know you're going to be able to think of other examples um, based on the, the passions and the problems that you just put in the chat. Okay, so let's just keep going. Think mashups. Okay. Let's brainstorm. Type in the chat things that you are passionate about. I'm coming over to the chat, and we're gonna gonna talk to you a little bit. See what we got in chat here. Ooh, we got a lot of people in the chat. Okay. Are your brains going a million miles a minute? Let me just come over here to the chat. It's not here doing it. Here we go. Chihuahuas. <laughs> Baby. 
notes. Oh my gosh. Somebody posted some video. Boy, if you want inspiration, just, and I don't, I don't recommend you do this all day because it's easy to get sucked in, but just go watch your Facebook feed and start clicking on videos. And there was this fun video. I forget what it was, but it was about uh, organic goat products. It was a Pinterest. That's right. Teresa was, uh, put it up as an example of a good um, p a page for a gift buying guide. And it was this lady who had done this niche blog on organic goats. Now, I don't know how you make a goat organic, but she was selling all different products related to goats. And we ended up joking around. Pygmy goats, these little itty bitty pygmy goats. There are people who are crazy fanatical about pygmy goats. So let's try a mashup with that. How about people who love pygmy goats and want to celebrate their birthday? Now, if you do a birthday bundle with pygmy goats all over the balloons and the streamers and the hat for the pygmy goat and what, who knows, right? And there's, that's a great target market, birthday bundles for pygmy goats. So you can niche it down. Okay. So uh, you can also do a whole lot of other stuff like print on demand, t-shirts and um, bath mats and shower curtains and all sorts of stuff, right? Wine. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wine. Okay. Same thing. You put Star Trek together with a wine product. I'm all over it. I think I've got um, a Millennium Falcon uh, grilled cheese maker. Oh, I definitely have a Darth Vader cake pan. Um, so if you, yeah, you put like wine together with Star Trek or Star Wars and, um, okay, anyway, keto cooking. Oh, interesting. Keto is a huge keyword. So if, what if you put together a bundle on uh, like a keto um a cooking bundle with, I don't know, but we can flesh out. We'll do and another one. I don't want to go uh, too deep into any of these because I'll go off and start brainstorming. And I wanted to make sure I uh, copy, I get through all of my, um, my content for you. So cats and my kids. Yeah. Who doesn't Bengal cats. That's interesting. All sorts of breeds of cats are people who are um, fanatical about a specific breed quilting. Now put quilting and cats together, right? So um, you put together a bundle of all of the ingredients necessary, all of the parts necessary to do a quilt that is all about cats, right? But you just bundle the pieces together with a pattern, for example. Music. So let's put music together with wine. Uh, how could you put music together with wine? How about, um, you know, a wine tasting kit with a music CD, for example? What else do we have? Cool. I'm not sure what you're saying cool about, but we'll just, I'll assume that this is good stuff. Chihuahuas, again, huge market. Pit bulls, dog rescue, cat rescue. Bourbon, oh yeah. There are people who are serious about their bourbon. I don't understand bourbon, but I don't need to. I just need to know how to um, do market research on people who are fanatical about bourbon. Pugs, trains, that's interesting. That's right, trains is a really niche market too. Great, you guys are doing an awesome job. Crochet, yeah. So you guys are doing a great job. Thank you for sharing some of your passions or passions you know about in the chat. Very cool. I learned some, uh, some new stuff myself. Trains, I, I didn't even think about that niche market. Today I stumbled across, um, I was looking in the sports and outdoors and I stumbled across a bunch of niche markets that I never knew existed. Just a bunch of different kind of sporty things people like to do. Um, so it's kind of fun to dig around just to get idea of people's passions and problems just digging around on Google and Pinterest and uh, Amazon. Okay, so we're gonna go back and share the screen. Whoops, sorry, can I go back and share the screen? Thank you for playing in the, in the chat there. Let's keep going, competitive research. So, you've identified a couple of um, niche markets you, you might wanna go after, you've narrowed it down to one or two, but now we need to find out whether or not there's, you know, uh, there's way too much competition. So you want to identify what's being sold on Amazon with your keywords, right? You want to identify the sales volume for the products, products in your niche. So we want to find out who's selling what and how much of it they're selling. So we can get a feel for the, the size of the market and the size of the competition in that market to see how many gaps there are, how, much, how many holes there are in the market for us to enter into. And in order to identify sales volume, um, Jungle Scout, it's pretty inexpensive. I forget how much it was. I think it's a one-time buy. It's their Chrome extension. And then Market Intelligence by Viral Launch, I recently changed over to that one. It's phenomenal. I think it's like 20 bucks a month, but if you buy a whole year, it's less. Um, totally worth it because you can go to a listing and click on it and find out exactly how many they sold. Uh, not exactly, but a general amount of how many they sell a month 
and what their gross and net profit is, or the gross profit is, and then their net profit after fees. Uh, you want to identify holes in the market and identify weaknesses in the products that are already on the market. And they're not necessarily bundles, okay? It could be a product on the market for a niche that has bundle potential and um, that listing is pretty weak or maybe the, uh, the product excel itself needs to be um, fleshed out and more things added to it to make it strong, but it already has decent sales. That's a great bundle opportunity. And then also you want to identify weaknesses in the listings. We'll talk a little bit about uh, that a little bit later, about what a good listing looks like and what a bad listing looks like and how you can capitalize on a bad listing by doing it better and improving the product. Okay, so here's what I want people to say when they see my bundle. Shut up and take my money. If you could do that in like Valley Girl style, shut up and take my money, uh, right? Okay, hi, Tammy. I'm going to shut off your... Uh, I'm going to shut off your, um, your video here, girl. Okay, so shut up and take my money. I want them to look at my bundle and stop looking, right? I want them to look at my listing and not want to look any further, not want to click around to see their other options. So my job is to understand my, that customer well enough that they don't want to look anywhere else right? We want to create an added value experience. What I mean by that is we want to add so much value that is relevant to them, not just throwing stuff in a bundle to make it look bigger, but we want to add things to that bundle that makes it a no brainer for them to buy. So your initial passion and problem research is going to reveal what that customer wants and needs, which is why you're going to hear me hammer on this every time you talk to me, why it is absolutely absolutely important to do your customer centric research first in your bundling process. It is, it's a, it's, it's a no brainer must be done. Okay. So make it unique. Of course, you don't want to jump on a listing that somebody else has done and just sort of do the same thing, but in a different color, right? You really want, once you understand your customer, you're going to know what's missing from that product and you want to over deliver. By over delivering, I mean um, maybe a packaging that's directly related to that bundle, right? So when they get that box and they open up the Amazon box and they take it out, they're not just taking out a poly bag of stuff, but they're taking out this cute box that they'll want to reuse by putting the stuff back in, maybe, for example, right? Um, and then putting inserts in that are instructional inserts or maybe a little added value. Let's say you're selling plush, right? And you put a little poem in, in there related to that put, plush. Right, so anything that you can over deliver. The difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra. So always try to do that little extra in your bundles, well actually anything in your business or life, always try to do that little extra. Not only because it sets you apart, because, but because it's the cool thing to do, right? Just giving that little extra value um, it puts a smile on everybody's face. So ask the right questions. Here's what you do not do. You do not ask yourself, what can I throw in this bundle? I see bundles all the time that are for like a coffee cup with a keychain thrown in there. How is that adding value to my coffee cup? Right now, if you give me a coffee cup with a cat on it and you put a cat themed coffee and, um, and a, a cat toy that I can use to play with my cat in the morning and a cat related crossword puzzle with a pen with a cat on it. That is a relevant bundle to a cat lover who loves coffee and their cat. But just putting, you know, a some completely unrelated product in there in order to lock down your listing does not add value to the customer. It does not create a value added experience to that customer. So that's a big no, no. Yes. Here's what you do. Here's what you ask yourself. What does my ideal buyer want or need? And when you answer that question and you run out of ideas, you re-ask it with the word else. You say, what else does that customer want or need? And you just keep asking that question in order to get um, a lot of ideas for brainstorming products to bring to a bundle. Okay, here's some ideas. Bundle example. I found this this afternoon. All I did was go on Amazon and I typed in get fit. And this guy caught my attention. It's awesome. I didn't even look at other listings. The listing is solid. It's a private label product. Look at all the cool stuff they put in there, right? It's a good price point. Oh, by the way, oh, great photos. This is a great listing right here. This is an absolutely wonderful listing and a wonderful product bundle. 
So you, some of you might be wondering what this box is in the center. I sometimes forget when I put the screenshots in there that uh, I have these extensions installed. Does anybody want to know what this is? It is RS. It's, I think it's called Rev Seller, R-E-V-S-E-L-L-E-R. -E -E and it's a paid extension, but it's not that much. And what it does is it tells me everything about this product that I need to know as a seller right here, right in this little box. So it's called Rev Seller, I believe. Just go Google it. Okay, let's keep going. Where do you source? All right, let me check the chat real quick and uh, see if everybody's still with me. I'm going real fast, I know I am, but I've got a lot to get through. So how you guys doing? You guys doing okay? Okay, so where to source? Viability question. Here's one of the biggest questions you wanna ask yourself. Do I have long-term access to my bundle's products? So the pieces you put in your bundle, you want to make sure that you can source them over and over. You can go to retail stores. You can buy wholesale. Or you can buy liquidation. Sometimes I'll buy a liquidation, but I'll buy all of the product that they have of that one SKU because I know I can create multiple types of bundles using that one base product. But then I'll lock down that product and nobody else will be able to get it because I'm buying it all. And I'll be able to negotiate a better price. So you can have it manufactured, AliExpress, China, India, Mexico, Canada, USA, Mars, et cetera. You can have stuff manufactured everywhere. Brand owners, you want to find brand owners who can white label their own product. So they'll take their product and put your label on it to lock down that listing as it's now your product. Etsy is a great way to, to find places to source um, unique things. Local stores, look at the back of labels of products when you go to a store to see who the manufacturer is. Here's an example, I just Googled Wholesale Plush, and I, I made sure that I, I cropped in the name of the website for you because I'm gonna go back and explore this. They had a ton of great stuff. J-O-I-S-S-U.com, never heard of them until today, but all I did was go to Google, Google is your friend, by the way, and I Googled Wholesale Plush and ran across this site on the first page, and they have a ton of different, what I like about this is this could actually be a bundle for you. These plush right here, are all related to the sea. Now what if you put that in a box that had waves on it and scuba divers, right? And create this really unique packaging and make it a bundle for kids and maybe an education bundle, right? You put a cheat sheet in there on the history of, you have a little ebook or a little a booklet made on the history of each of these um, particular plush, right? And there's an educational bundle for the sea. And they have a lot of other bundles in there. That, go check them out, J-O-I-S-S-U dot com. So if someone puts that in the chat for me, I'd appreciate it. So I don't have to flip back over there. J-O-I-S-S-U dot com. Okay, here's another example. I typed in private label, label baking supplies. And I came up, oh, there were so many of them. But the very first page, there's um, all of these. But this one here, um, Clabber Girl, she'll private label, they'll private label their own products of the range of ingredients, sizes, packaging. For clients that do not require their own recipe, we have private label cookies options available, right? These are all potential, let's say one of these suppliers can do um, gluten-free or keto cookie mix for you. You put together a cookie mix, but with your brand on it, your company name on it, right? Or your brand name on it, not company name. Here's another example of searching. I went to AliExpress because, because uh, you know, I have kitchen organization on the brain right now. And I typed in kitchen organization and very quickly I found these three products. This little thing that you put in the sink for a buck 41, a dollar, dollar 19 each for these, um, these hangers that go over your drawers to hang towels on. And then this one here that you can hang other stuff that um, kind of hang off of a shelf. But there were so many other ideas and, and different price points just to put together a kitchen organizational bundle that I can sell for like 30 bucks if I have enough pieces in there. Maybe they're all color coordinated, right? I have an all pink pack, all white, all blue, all green. My, um, my kitchen is kind of this turquoise-ish here, this aqua. So if you did kitchen organization uh, pack with six or seven different things in it, all in aqua, I would be your perfect customer. Okay, what to avoid when bundling? This is what I told you I was gonna revisit. Me Too products. You don't just want to look at other people's bundles and try to do exactly the same thing they are. You want to do it better. You want to understand the customer that they're selling to even better than they do. So you can create a bundle that when a customer sees two or three or four of the same types of bundles when in their search, yours is going to sh significantly shine out and they're going to click on you and they won't want to go anywhere else. 
You know, you want to avoid stuffing. Like I said, with the coffee cup and some keychain tossed in, that's called bundle. I call it bundle. It's not called like officially bundle stuffing, but I call it bundle stuffing where you're stuffing crap into a bundle and make it look like it's a lot. But the stuff that you're putting in there is not at all relevant to your customer market. And again, that brings us back to, you know, I'm going to say it, customer centric research. When you do that, there is no chance you're going to stuff some unrelated product in there because your brain's going to say, oh, that customer's not going to want that keychain. I'm not going to put that in there. Okay. So another thing to avoid when bundling is not optimizing your listing, right? So throwing up a listing and spending all that time on customer research and all the time on sourcing your product, and then you put up a listing that's met, it doesn't convert, there's not good pictures, you don't have lifestyle images, you haven't done your keyword research, you haven't written great copy, right? So if you're going to go through all this work, make sure you're optimizing your listing. Doing poor photos, right? Uh, you can get the background uh, taken off of the photos for like five bucks at Fiverr for like 20 of them. Um, and make sure that you take really, really good photos, not just toss something up there. So there's not enough margin. This is a business after all, folks. We are here to make money. So we want to make sure that there is enough, plenty of margin in our bundles so that we can sell it at a price point that people will, want, will be okay paying um, and then pay um, a certain amount for our bundles, our bundle products, so that there's enough margin in there that we could do sales, giveaways, do pay-per-click, um, and lower the price if we wanted to, right? So you have to make sure that there's a, a, enough margin in all in your products so that there's wiggle room. Okay, and then overthink, here, I see this a lot, uh, sadly, I, I think, and I think we're all guilty of it, it's not ever, it's, it's me too, we tend to overthink things, and that comes from kind of a fear of trying something new. So we'll overthink something to death to the point where we don't take action. So at some point, you, ha you, you feed your brain, you learn as much as you can, and then you just pull the trigger and, and do the best you can, and then go back and, and tweak and refine as you learn more, right? And then the perfectionism is kind of on the same scale. It's like, I want it to be perfect, so I'm going to go find something else. So, no, no, it's not quite perfect. Well, there's no such thing as perfect because perfect in your eyes might be perf different in somebody else's eyes. Um, just do the very best you can and don't let overthinking or perfectionism stall you from moving forward. Okay, so here's an example of what not to do. This person put together a bundle, and I'm so sorry if it's anybody in this, in this webinar. If you're seeing this and you're seeing the webinar and this is your bundle, contact me. Uh, reach out on facebook.com slash groups slash deal diva and contact me and uh, I'll help you figure out how to make a better a better listing than this okay because I want to help you I don't want to put anybody down or make you feel like weird this could have been a beginner who didn't understand um, the things that I teach and uh, if it's any of yours or you have uh, listings that look like this please contact me and let me help you do a better job so that you make more money okay so they have a lot of uh, images in there right but the bundle themselves, you've got a couple of packs of these little hearts and two sticker packs. The price point is terrible. I'm, I can't figure out what their target market is, right? So they haven't really locked down that who is their ideal customer, right? And they put things like dogs, cats, raccoons, birds, bears. Um, so they're all over the place in this. And of course, the price point of $3, they're losing, and that's after fees, they're losing 92 cents. That doesn't even include the cost of goods sold, shipping, prepping, etc. So uh, if this is a vintage thank you is you, reach out to me so I can help you. Okay, how can you plan your bundles right now? Let me check in here and see how everybody's doing. How are you guys doing? This lovely rev seller, yes, so do I. Uh, thank you, Anita, for putting josu.com in there. Info so helpful. I know I am going at like... Um, fire hose speed but you can rewatch it and you can slow me down when you rewatch it if you need to but i want to make sure i can cover a ton of content for you guys so hang in there uh i'm going to keep going I'm going to go over a little bit over if that's okay with you guys i want to make sure i'm giving you everything i can brian i totally build my business on evergreen bundles i'm gonna do the q a in just a, just a couple of minutes so hang in there and um i uh, tonight we're talking about how can we really focus in on um, the first six months of 2018 and build a plan 
uh, for 2018 so we can leverage the seasonal stuff on top of our evergreen. So, and you guys can all go to bundlemasterclass.com. It's, I'll put it in the chat here. It's bundlemasterclass.com. And you can see the outline for the class. I've got a bunch of free webinars up there on all different topics. Uh, I even show you some bundles that I actually create that I have on Amazon right now so you can see how I do it and my thought process. I have some um, niche market brainstorming sessions on there. It's a lot of fun. Um, so go ahead, bundlemasterclass.com. But let's scooch back over here, and I just have a little bit more to go. So hang in there, guys. Hang in there. Okay. How to plan your bundles right now. All right, it's December 1 tomorrow. You've got time to plan your bundles for January, February, March, April, et cetera, right? So first, you want to do market research on Google and Amazon, like the examples I just showed you of how to start looking for fanatical niche markets that you can bring products to. Now, one, um, one thing I didn't mention was checking Keepa charts. So if you don't have the Keepa extension, it's free. Install it on Chrome. Uh, it's a keep a Chrome extension and it actually shows up on the listing page of the of your Amazon listings So you can look at uh, the keep charts, but beware the keep chart right now for a Valentine's bundle or an Easter basket um, It will be completely uh, the numbers right now will not be relevant What you want to do is look back to the previous season to see how maybe maybe if you just type an Easter bundle for a niche market uh, and then you'll see that the rank is like, you know, 3 million or whatever right now. But if you look at what the rank was and how well it sold a year, uh, April of this year, let's say February, March, April, um, look at that time frame to see uh, the, the relevant time frame for that seasonal bundle, right? So don't get tripped up by looking at the charts as they are right now for seasonal bundles. You have to look during the time frame that a seasonal bundle is actually active. Okay. So check retailers. Displays are, you know, Christmas displays were going up in like August in like places like Michael's and Hobby Lobby and Joanne Fabric, right? And even Costco, they were going up August, September. So you can actually start seeing some displays going up now in a lot of retail stores, some retail stores, maybe not, not a lot, but some, where you can start getting ideas for niche markets for, for uh, well, definitely for um, New Year's resolutions. That stuff is in. Go start wandering the halls of a big box store to look for these displays, these end cap displays and these midway displays, they're called, that are all basically niche markets for um, the January season. And a lot of times, you guys start noticing that if you follow like what Walmart and Target does in terms of merchandising, it's very telling. So in uh, end of December, January, what do you start seeing? you start seeing plastic containers, right? Because people start thinking about organizing their lives, their houses, their stuff at the end of December and January. And they've, they've done millions of dollars of research, right? To determine that that's what happens. So follow their trends to see, okay, they, they, they now have this huge display for whatever, kitchen organization or plastic containers for organizing a kitchen this time of year, every single year. That's an indication for you that there's a potential market for you to explore. Okay, get a journal, carry around a piece of paper. You can do it on your phone too. There's no apps and there's Evernote and things. I'm more of a writer. I like to physically have something I can write. I, I use some, I, I created a bundle journal, believe it or not, and a bundle planner journal it's called. And, uh, and I just jot down um, niche market ideas and also product ideas as I see them that I can match up with niche markets after I flesh out the customer centric approach or research approach. Okay. So start capturing all your ideas for niche markets so that you can come back and do some research and then you can even outsource the research. Once you get really good at um, identifying niche markets, there's a certain process you go through uh, to validate that market. The market validation is um, module, I think two or three in bundle masterclass. You can actually outsource that entire validation piece to somebody in the Philippines for two or three bucks an hour. Okay, once you get good at it and you start getting the system going. So, and the last thing you can do, of course, is join the bundle masterclass. You knew I was gonna say that, right? If any of my masterclass students are in the chat, give a shout out, hello. Uh, I know Anita, Nick might be in there, a couple of other people, just say hi. Jeffrey might be in there. Uh, I've got, we've got 200 master bundlers in the, in the bundle masterclass since I created the course this past summer. It's only about less than six months old.